One question that every physicist should know the answer to is why is the sky blue? Now the standard answer you'll hear to this is Rayleigh scattering, but in fact that answer is incomplete and suggests that the question we should be asking is why isn't the sky purple? Now you might have noticed from the equipment around me that I am in a dark room, or at least a room that can be turned into a dark room, so I'm going to draw the curtains, fill this laser reflection tank full of water, and I'm going to show you exactly what Rayleigh scattering is. I've filled the tank about three quarters full just of normal tap water and I have added a generous helping of scattering agent. I'm using pine salt because it works really, really well and this bottle was full when I started so you can see just how much I've put in there. I then found something long and pokey to mix it all together with. So all I need to do now is just shine a light at it and see what happens. So here is the tank doing its thing. We've got the white continuous light source shining in at one end, and you can see that at short path lengths, we get these lovely bluish tones. We slowly make our way through the spectrum until we get to the end of the tank where we can see orange and red tones. Now at this point, all of the blue light has been scattered away, and that's why we're left with the longer wavelengths of orange and red. So just to make sense of that, here we have Mr. Man on Earth and the sun in the sky. Now the sun emits all the colours of the visible spectrum and we know this because we can use something called a spectrophotometer to look at the sun and see what wavelengths it's giving off. Here you can see that we have the full visible spectrum and also some ultraviolet and a lot of infrared which obviously our eyes can't see at all. So the sun emits photons of every colour and the chances of that photon being scattered is dependent on its wavelength. Rayleigh tells us that the scattering cross section S, which is similar to the probability of a scattering event taking place, says that this is proportional to 1 over lambda to the 4. This means that the chances of scattering are high when this bit is big. And for that to happen, we need this bottom bit, the wavelength term, to be small, so small wavelength. Now this power to the 4 is super influential here. It makes this term very sensitive and it can get very big very quickly. So when we sub in for long wavelengths, this number will be huge. And when we divide one by a very big number, we get a small number. So small chance of scattering. And for that reason, that is why the scattering will be dominated by shorter wavelengths. So when a scattering event takes place, we know that it's gonna be most likely for the short wavelengths. And that's exactly what we see, short wavelengths in the blue region. And no matter what direction we look to in the sky, we are always gonna see those shorter wavelengths scattered back at us. So we can tell from this experiment that the shorter blue wavelengths are preferentially scattered over the longer red ones and this is what we expect from Rayleigh's law. However, we know what the visible spectrum looks like and blue doesn't sit at the end. There are two further colours, namely indigo and violet, so why is it that when we look to the skies we don't see those shorter wavelengths? Why don't we see purple? Well, the answer lies in our eyes and how well we can pick up different colours of light. Our eyes contain three different types of cones and each are sensitive to different colours. So we've got one for red, one for blue and one for green. And it depends how much each one is triggered as to what colour we see. Now our blue receptor is the weakest in sensitivity of them all and the sensitivity drops off significantly when we get to the purple region. So Rayleigh scattering, the preferential scattering of those shorter wavelengths, coupled with the fact that our eyes can't see purple very well, is the reason why the sky is blue. If you'd like to know more about the colour theory of light, you can watch our colour mixer video just here and this explains why we can see every single colour in the spectrum. Thanks for watching.